Well, I guess one reason I came into art work and missionary work was because, um, especially in this combination, was um, I would get extremely upset after a long period of of um, being hurt, and um, I wanted to learn more patience. And if anything, I learned that in Japan, the people, no matter how quirky somebody may seem, um, they have a lot of patience. A lot of the people really do, and they work together. And it's not cool to hurt other people. It's not um, avant-garde, or it's not you know, artistically cool in any way to be insane. Um, the things that I notice in some people, I would say, compared to American people, I think that Japanese people can uh, temper them, their, uh, their, their feelings. I wouldn't say it's always wonderful, but I would say that they're polite, and um, I was very thankful for the opportunities I had there. I've never been, um, very rarely, the 20 years that I worked there, more than 20 years, um, I never, almost never had any type of shocking um, horror experience. Uh, it's very much rare, more rare in Japan. The crime and uh, all this kind of chaos, there's, there, it's far less. So that appealed to me, and um, I liked living there. Uh, they don't have so much of a military, probably because of war. Um, after World War II, there were some laws made that the Japanese were not to use their intelligence to make military weapons, unless it was to help America, which some have done. Um, but I was given a lot of opportunities there. I worked as a journalist for a diplomatic magazine uh, for two years uh, part-time, as well as um, zipping around from class to class. I got to share my uh, point of view, my faith, um, good stories with the heart. I wrote the curriculum. At least half of every class were um, stories that I had rewritten from good materials instead of just simply um, materialistic, capitalistic um, texts, you know, what to buy, um, where to go to the bank. Um, you know, something that was a little bit more feeding for their, their hearts. Um, so I really enjoyed editing, rewriting um, um, different types of books, working with scientists, um, and a lot of executives. Some were elderly, you know, like fathers of large companies such as Hitachi. Um, and listening to the history of Japan and their history and I guess one thing that I remember was one time I had like nine students who were older. They keep studying. Many people keep studying. Lifelong uh, learning is very common there. And the question came up, what did you do in your childhood? And all of them had really bad stories of war that they had experienced and witnessed. And, um, you know, it's, it was very sad. I remember one fellow I met in Tonga who was Japanese, who was doing volunteer work, said that when the bombs hit Nagasaki, his mom took five of the children in one closet, and his dad took the other five children in the other closet. But they had actually five boys and five girls in their family of ten children, and um, I think it was his mother's side that got hit with a bomb, and like that, all of them were gone. And, uh, you know, the radiation problem, uh, sometimes you can see there are some scars still. Looks like people have, older people might have had some radiation um, experience on side of their face or things like this, or there's some handicap. Quite a lot, you see quite a lot in Japan because there's such a concentration of people in train stations. Quite often people, you know, jump in front of the train the train is stopped, especially in snowy weather. Um, there's a lot of depression in the past, you know, not right now. I don't know because I haven't been there for a year. I offered to paint murals covering the walls of Tachikawa train station 
use Tachikawa. I think that is the one where they have quite a few people who jump onto the train tracks. So they debated about it for six months, but then said that they couldn't protect it from graffiti, so they wouldn't allow me to do something a little uplifting there. It certainly helps me because it's something, it's like something you're supposed to do in my case, and I think in people have uh, something in their heart they want to do. They might even be praying about guidance and direction in their lives. I think that's a good first step because maybe um, they don't feel that professional to start out with and some of their art or whatever they're doing, in this case art, looks good and some doesn't look so good and maybe it's overworked and there's too much frustration. Um, there's some techniques and things to learn that they haven't yet been told or taught. But I think direction is very important and um, not, not um, following only what someone else wants us to do. It's nice to have somebody who's supportive of our own heart's desires, but it's good to know that each of us is unique. And um, if somebody, like whoever is watching this, has a desire to do something to help better the world, that may be actually God's voice. I mean, when you're a child, you probably think, I want to do this, this, and this, and this. And then you find out, I've done almost all of those things, almost to a professional or to a professional level, years of my life. And it wasn't just one thing. So we have time, you know, to do, you know, fulfill our dreams. And if somebody's frustrated because they can't find space to paint or they can't find a place where they can play their musical instrument, I don't think giving up is really the solution. I think maybe praying and advertising, you know, for the right door to open. Not every door that opens is the right door. I put some advertisements out recently that I wanted an investor and I got several responses where I advertised. I advertised a few different places that were not too expensive and also on Craigslist and I got some spam and some junk but I did find a good investor from advertising and um, I also advertised you know for a few different situations needing a place or needing somebody to sublet. I think a lot of people don't advertise, so when business is down, you should advertise. That's a good thing, and, and I, I think people should live their dreams, and if somebody is obstructing the way, that there should be a nice, calm conversation, and um, that people should uh, work to live their dreams. You know, I think that's really important, or else you just can start to hate everybody out of frustration, you know, or telling other people how they can do things that the individual needs to be doing themselves. I think that's uh, something that I've seen recently and maybe I myself also am guilty of. I want to help others, but I also need to live my own life and realize God is my Father in Heaven and He's my most important parent and my most important love and um, other people are flesh and bones and, you know, I don't like to say blood, but, you know, they're just human, sometimes obstacles. Um, we can love people, but sometimes they don't need to control our lives, <clears throat> that God should be the most important person, the priority, the most important love, and that time with heaven should be sacrosanct. If it, if it is sacrosanct, if it's holy, that time with heaven is the most important and most wonderful time, then we will definitely be getting some sort of inspiration of what will make us happy and uh, what is what are good goals to follow for our own individual path and how we can make the world a better place. Okay, well, I just do appreciate your time and um, thank you so much for taking the time to ask me questions about myself. and. Um, Again, my, uh, if you want to Google my name, you'll see some different websites that have some of my art. Um, mine is getting back up again. 
Anyway, it's Anna Monahan, A-N-A, -A, one N, Monahan with a G, M-O-N-A-G, H-A-N, Anna Monahan. And my email is quickroad at hotmail.com. And you're welcome to write if you put on the subject line artwork um, that will help me not to ignore it if you're interested in knowing more I'm happy to write to you uh, you know if you need to do some sort of project I'm right there to assist in doing artwork for you